So, no filter. Congratulations. You managed to qualify for the games. How does it feel? Describe us the feeling. It's uh, amazing. Uh, I, I think I don't even have words in Portuguese, let alone uh, speak in English. But uh, it's like uh, you lift a huge rock from your back, uh, the adrenaline just goes down and I feel like I could die right now with no energy, but uh, if they tell me that I have another fight to secure the, the games, I know I'll be ready. So that's the kind of, it, the, the chip hasn't clicked yet. For sure. Well, it's such a joy for us to watch you qualified. You're the definition of, you know, a classy fighter. Uh, <laughs> old guy. <laughs> you can say old guy. I don't mind. <laughs> We spoke in Europe and you said, look, the experience is going to pay. All these young athletes are coming in, but I'm going to show you that the experience is going to pay. Walk us through your day of competition and how did you manage to, to win, you know, fight by fight and obviously the one that, that you managed to qualify with. I think you just gave the answer. It was to just go fight by fight. I knew that what the end result could be, but I also knew that if I just focused on the, on the quota, uh, I wouldn't do my best. So I knew that each fight was the decisive fight, each point was the decisive point. Uh, I had a few moments in the second fight where I kind of rushed it, just feeling that uh, anxiety. And uh, even right now in the semi-final or uh, in the classification match, um, you need to tell yourself it's, uh, it's a lot of time inside uh, to be able to be all the time in full mode, but that's what I tried today and it paid off. For sure, and this is great experience for the Olympic Games. I feel like for this type of competition where it's win or lose, you know, it's not like uh, you get the medal, it's win or lose. Uh, it's such a, a crazy balance between, you know, going and you have the energy, but staying calm and under control. I think that this was harder to face than the Olympics. At the Olympics, I was completely relaxed because it's like you're in the biggest stage. You're going to do what you love no matter what. Uh, you don't even think about win or lose. You just think about your performance, how you're going to be, how your body is. And uh, today, you know that even if you are at your best, something goes wrong and then you will lose the chance to go to that place. And uh, um, like our lives as athletes, unfortunately are defined by the medals, by the going to the Olympics and whatnot. Uh, so it puts a lot of pressure that uh, you usually wouldn't have. Usually it would be really just one more fight, but today you know that in the end you have something else waiting. For sure, and that's my last question before giving the hand to John. If you go and you talked about Rio, you talk about all the process, if you had to go and kind of remind us the, the stepping stones that for you, you know, all this hard work for four years, you now qualified. What run us through kind of a running, a quick run back of these, these crazy four years and what comes to mind? Once again, five years. Remember that we are already in 2021 and uh, a lot changed. Uh, I went to Rio in minus 58. Then I took an adventure to minus 68. I know I didn't do the things as they should be done, but I only discovered that too late. So I went back to 58. Uh, I uh, moved to Madrid. Uh, then I came back to Portugal after one year. Uh, because of the pandemic, I had everything planned to, uh, to start working as a medical doctor after the Olympics, but because of the pandemic uh, being postponed, I had to start before. So I've been working a 40 hour shift each week, uh, plus two trainings a day. Uh, so I don't know, I, I think that these five years, uh, if you look at from one side, I think they feel like 100. On the other hand, I think it was yesterday that I was in Rio. Uh, and it's when you're here, you don't remember all of the hours of training that you hated, all of those moments when you said I could just be in bed. Uh, I just wanted to eat a little bit more, <laughs> uh, but it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely worth it. And I want to echo Arthur's congratulations, Rui. Long-time campaigner, long-time medalist, but you're nearer the end than the start now. And I heard you talking to someone on the phone. May have been your father, I'm not sure. I don't know if it, I heard Papa. That, 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 okay, so give us, what was, the con, what was the content of the conversation to Papa? 
Oh, he was super happy. Uh, he was uh, crying with happiness. And uh, I was just telling him, it's okay. And he said, just don't worry, it's really happiness. Uh, because uh, if I suffer, I know that my parents suffer 10 times more. Um, like every injury that I have, I, I know, for example, I tell my father everything. To my mother, it has a little filter because I know that she makes it 10 times harder. So I reduce 10 times for her because I know that then she will imagine the real thing. And uh, I know they suffer a lot with uh, all of the diets that they see me doing, all of the trainings, all of the moments that they know that I cannot be there. Um, and they, so it's a relief for me, but also for them, uh, for my coaches, for my girlfriend, uh, for everyone that has been supporting me uh, through all this time. Well, fantastic to hear that family support and that, you know, celebration and the emotion behind it. But also you said, Rio felt like yesterday, Tokyo's going to be here, you know, tomorrow. That's the way it works. It goes fast. As I said, you've got the Olympic experience. You're a seasoned professional now. You said you were an old man. I wouldn't say that. Um, but you've got the experience. How's that going to change your preparation and approach to Tokyo to savor that moment, to enjoy um, the chance to be an Olympian during a historic Olympic Games? I don't think it will change anything on the preparation. It might change on the day of the fights. Uh, for example, for Rio, I knew that until, uh, I think it was 17th of August of uh, 2016, I knew that day was the best day that I, uh, that I was physically prepared. That was my best day so far. <laughs> uh, but I think I, I didn't quite get to enjoy Rio uh, the way that I did, for example, Manchester the world championship in rio i had my family there my friends my girlfriend and uh during the day i didn't go to see them because i didn't want to get distracted oh no it's uh one more day it's one more fight it's uh the the stage of your dreams so you just need to be there with the ones that supported you i know that in this case tokyo won't have the um, public so but at the same time you know you know how to enjoy the day and not just leave the, okay, this fight has finished, I won, who is the next one? Huh. No, just relax, enjoy, it's the Olympics, it's a, it's a party, so just enjoy it. And that way you can see, for example, Abu Gausch, the minus 6A Olympic champion, you can see the smile on his face all day, four fights, smiling, doing things that no one would dare to do in a world championship, let alone in the Olympics. And that's how you win, I think. I'll talk to you, Henry. I'll talk to you after Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll be ready with the next interview. We hope you can fight with that freedom and also have the relaxation now because you've done it. Double Olympian, Rui Bregranza, well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations, Amen. <laughs>